Hello again everyone, and today I have a very tiny, simple, but curious little lens from TT Artisan, the 28mm f5.6. It's an obvious copy of the hideously expensive Leica Summeron M 28mm f5.6. Well, they've certainly got the aesthetics correct, because this thing looks gorgeous. It's one of the neatest looking little lenses I've ever handled. I just wish I had an equally gorgeous Leica camera to put it on. And at under 300 US dollars, this particular lens is about one tenth the price of its original Leica counterpart. I'd like to thank TT Artisan for sending me a copy of this lens for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. The lens is currently only available on Leica M mount, but you can adapt it onto other camera systems with a correct adapter. I'll be testing this one on a Sony camera. This thing is clearly all about the tiny size and aesthetic design, in my opinion. A 28mm f5.6 lens that can only focus down to 1 meter is not really going to get you exciting dramatic pictures, but it can be quite useful for street or landscape photography. The lens itself is pretty simple, it's a completely manual optic, manual focus and manual aperture control, and as well as being tiny, it's lightweight at only 150 grams, and the metallic build quality feels lovely and solid. The main control point is the manual focus ring, which can be locked in position at infinity if you want. It turns very smoothly otherwise, although focusing with that dial takes a bit of getting used to, and it's very tricky to handle during video work. In front of that we have the aperture ring, with two little grips to turn it, and it clicks quite positively at every f-stop. The lens comes with a metallic slip-on cap, an interesting hood, and its filter size is only 37mm. Overall, it's a really unique design, but one that looks as cool as it feels well assembled. Now let's look at image quality. We'll start by adapting it onto a full-frame camera, my Sony a7R 3 with its 42 megapixel sensor. There are no in-camera corrections available with this lens. In the middle of the image, we see loads of lovely sharpness and no colour fringing, but contrast is rather low. Over in the corners, image quality falls apart quickly. At f8 and f11, we see tiny improvements, but the image is still really soft. However, at f16, despite the onset of diffraction, we do see a good improvement and clear image quality. So, on a full frame camera, corner softness is the problem here, which is never good to see on a wide angle lens. Alright, well, let's see how it works on an APS-C camera now, my 24 megapixel Sony A5100. At f5.6, we continue to see fantastic performance in the middle. The corners are still soft, but thankfully nowhere near as bad as they were on full frame. f8 looks a little better, but f11 looks nice and sharp in the corners now. So on an APS-C camera, it's still not exactly 10 out of 10, but it does sharpen up very well on stopping down. Ok, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. The lens projects a moderate barrel distortion here, but nothing serious. More serious is the vignetting at f5.6, those corners are looking pretty dark to me. You can stop down to f8 or darker if you want, but it won't make any difference, so you might want to correct for that in editing. Alright, well, let's see how well the lens works against bright lights. Gosh, what a lot of flaring, that really is quite an issue, and that flaring crops up in all kinds of images you take, so it can be quite a serious problem. When it comes to minimum focus distance and out of focus backgrounds, those are difficult for me to test today because, as I mentioned, the minimum focus distance is 1 meter, which is quite a creative limitation on this lens, this is the most out of focus background you'll be able to get. So, I'll conclude the review by saying that this is a lens that is utterly gorgeous to look at on the outside, and will make your camera, particularly if it's a Leica camera, look fantastic. Its sharpness isn't too bad on an APS-C camera, but other than that, its image quality though is generally poor. Although if you stop its aperture down far enough, you'll be able to get some good quality street photography.